Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Decisive Campaigns Barbarossa, episode number 23. So we're just jumping into the history here. I mean, I guess the turn resolution itself, I haven't seen this yet. But I am, I don't know, I guess more curious about the results this time than I normally am. Not sure why. But I guess with a couple of the thrusts we've made, it'll be interesting to see how the Soviet opposition responds. I feel like a tennis match or like a ping, watching a ping pong ball bouncing around trying to figure out where I'm supposed to look. Finish theater looks normal. Okay, they did do a pretty aggressive thrust at Krivorog. Which was undefended. They could have taken it, I guess. But they did not. Smolensk Bridge is blown now, too. Hmm. Okay, Guderian's forces... I mean, there's so many forces against them, but okay. Uh, HQ's moving in. Huh. No attacks. Situation Center. It appears that, that considerable enemy elements did manage to escape encirclement at Velikai Luki. The trouble is that our Panzer Divisions now have such low combat strength that they just do not have the men to seal off any sizable areas. Wow, I, I sympathize with that. I mean, you know, slightly different in our case, but similar. Everybody in North got a bonus. Um, 16th is out anyway, but... Okay, good. Our, well, 4th Army's out, but both the Panzer Groups got a bonus. Not sure the 2nd Panzer Group can use it. And good bonuses in the South, 17th, 11th, and 3rd. Those should all be useful. I think 11th is back with us. 17th is, always, is obviously trying to make progress along the river to support 1st Panzer Group. Would love to have seen 6th Army in here, but I'll take what we got. Oh, wow, look at the fuel finally is back. Oof, thank goodness. So South's fuel, probably with the trucks and the trains and everything we've been trying to shimmy our way <laughs> to a better result. Finally, we got some fuel down there, which is so, so good to see. All right, we'll jump into the history real fast. I don't really know what to say about it. I did look at it. I don't think there's too much of consequence to report, so I guess we'll just be kind of zipping through. There's a few things, but not too much to focus on. This is one of them. The fact that uh, my little pressure with 9th Army, it won't end up resulting in cutoff forces. They were able to... I mean, it's actually really substantial that they were able to do that with the zone of control, um, you know, limitations. So same kind of deal. They're also breaking... I, I mean, I, I'm actually really happy that they're pushing out of this area, except for that guy didn't get off the mountain. We might have to force him off. Otherwise, yeah, they're, they're just trying to, I think, round the corner here, fill in the gap. There's obviously uh, a bit of a gap in their lines. So I'm, I suspect the Soviet player is Soviet uh, leadership. Let's role play it. Is concerned about the gap towards Moscow. We'll try to force that. Now down in Orel, they've blown the bridge, which is I think I think it's only really going to hurt them in the short term. Maybe even in the long term. I don't really need to go that direction. I'm heading north. Anyway, they did surround that uh, Guderian's forces a little bit more. They bring in forces from the north, from Luga area, I'm trying to... I mean, we're just at the edge of the forest, still not quite into the forest, so we can fight well here. I have to keep that in mind. I may even want to make a feint backwards, let them fill it in so we have more um, plains and non-forest territory to work with in any kind of offensives. The Finnish stuff is just nothing. They leave another sacrificial lamb. This was a little bit consequential, the fact that they drove north towards Kriverog, which I knew that they could have done. I looked at that off-camera last turn, and I was almost debating whether or not to move my 11th army over here to protect this road. But you know what? It doesn't It didn't matter too much. I didn't want my headquarters attacked, and we'll retake that territory pretty quickly. The only bad thing would have been if they took the city itself, but even then we would have retaken it. Okay, shifting along the uh, sixth the theater uh, army group south with the uh, sixth army, and then more shifting around my second army and army group center right outside of Smolensk. 
And then this is more of a push towards Gruderian's forces shifting by the 18th Army and Army Group North, shifting by 11th Army. Yeah, further pressure against Gruderian's forces, some shuffling by 18th Army, and then some headquarters moving. Now, some of the headquarters moving is, uh, I guess that one in particular is what I'm referring to, a little suspect. But then last we have the stats. Uh, we're closing the gap. I guess we're making forward progress here, but it's not great. And the number of sustained casualties went up by a very standard 100k, and we went up by 10k. So it's once again this um, 10 to 1 ratio, which again, if we can maintain the 10 to 1 after having done better than 10, I mean, we're, you know, at 20 to 5, so 4 to 3. If we can, I mean, 40 to 3. If we can now go 30 to 3, so 10 to 1, I'll be happy with that for the rest of the game, but it's going to be more and more difficult to do so. What happens in the Finnish theater? may surprise you. No, no, not really. I'm just uh, being facetious here. Oh, it looks like we did completely destroyed a division, lost some other forces. Uh, our readiness is, you know, it could be a little higher, but that's probably the fatigue. And I don't yet think it's time to move in. So that's right. <laughs> anyway, what we wanted to do, we have done. I might want to shuffle some forces um, from this hex over to the ones that are constantly attacking, but for now, I don't. So that's it. Army Group North. Well, the rest of it. The main part of it. Yeah, uh, there's going to be some fun things I think we can do here. Um, let's fill out the front. Get this unit. 20. Yeah, let's get this unit in here. We could do an attack. We'll probably do it from three people. One, two... Three, I guess. Okay, looks good. We only lost one, they lost 14. More importantly, we pushed them out of this area, and I... Yes, I definitely want to do a follow-up if I can. I mean, we need to leave one person to defend. Yeah, well, in order to make this a whole connection, we'll go ahead and do the follow-up. Perfect. I don't even know where they're going to retreat to. Wow, wow, okay. It works for me. But we have now cut off this pocket, which is great. I'm not sure if it's the right moment to do an attack against these guys. Actually, what I'd like to do is attack them first and get a five-sided surround on them. We'll move our HQ up a little bit just to get better uh, bonuses. But we're starting to look at pretty, uh, mostly single unit hexes, which means that we're basically at our, our limit. I don't know if this attack is the right thing to do yet. No, he's, he's already entrenched too, so we'll wait to recover our readiness and we'll hold off on that one. Which means we can already swing over to the right side, the east side. Uh, there's definitely one thing I want to do. I want to try to push this infantry out. So I can do this three-sided attack. That's the big one. Big money, big money, big money, good. So no losses there. Um, the unit was weakened beforehand. Yeah, started at readiness of only 48. Did have 85 entrenchment by merit of being in the mountain. Anyway, we'll move this unit in here technically, but he'll probably move back. This unit, we do want to do a follow-up attack. You, I guess, get on the mountain. Might as well do the follow-up attack just because they're weak now, and hopefully we can just get a, a shatter. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's... It, it was not a guarantee. It was... You know, I would say it was maybe even lucky that we got it. But we got it, that's the important thing. And mainly that's just important, so I don't have to worry about chasing some low-strength unit. Although that is kind of the Barbarossa experience, so maybe we're missing out by not doing that. Uh, they do have two units here. It's possible. I mean, we're very close to Novgorod. I, the, the, on all these fronts, we're starting to get close to very key, um, very key cities. I mean... Leningrad is still a little far away because we just have very important cities to capture before that. But, you know, we're getting close and this is, I mean, Hitler must be happy in some sense because Leningrad is his first priority and we are pushing nearer and nearer. Looks like Talon now cut off. We can try to isolate these forces. Hopefully they don't all end up in Talon itself. If I was to switch over to Riga, there is, I think, a decision for it. Army group north. 
Rail conversion, yeah. There is a decision to choose whether or not we want to switch back from going to Riga to Talon. If I was to do that, we would actually be able to um, get Siege Artillery, I mean, in the however many turns it takes, So, but it, we won't be doing that. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I want to do? I don't know. So yeah, what I didn't finish saying, but so we could do an attack here. It might be a little bad, but they also have low readiness. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take my chances here. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay, not bad. Two heavy infantry. We shattered one of their divisions. That includes a T-34. Looks like they took fair, a fair amount of casualties, too. So 64, 6 to 4 in terms of infantry. Lots of equipment lost, though. I think that was worth it. You know, I think so. Now, is there anybody who can move to help? I think we might do something... We might be a little bit aggressive here and move both forces forward. It seems a little bit... I mean, it is a... That's not... Doesn't just seem aggressive. It is aggressive. My thoughts on this is... The tank division probably can't cut across the marsh. That's just the same way that this unit can't attack that unit because it's it would have to it can only go on the road. So we're the cav, however, can step off over here. However, if they do that, I feel like we may be cut off one turn, but we will cut them off immediately. And more importantly, I can do a follow-up attack now. Oh wow. Boy, decisions, decisions. Against this one. Well, this one has no entrenchment, and I feel like it's a more valuable target to follow up against, so we'll do that. It did not go well. That did not go well at all. Very surprising losses. Maybe it's making up for my good luck earlier. Three to seven. Yeah, I mean, with a unit that started at 18 readiness, didn't have any entrenchment. Um, I think that that was a fairly unlucky turn of events. I'm not even sure if we want to move in. We may want them to come back. I'm going to go ahead and move forward just to get the extra scouting to see how they react to that. Maybe I should have attacked this unit after all. I don't know. But that's really... I mean, we can't really do this attack. I don't know how I'm going to navigate this. 16th Army will be helpful when we want to get going here. So basically, uh, the Panzer Group has done its job, it's pushed up this wing, we're actually very close to Novgorod, maybe we can consider taking that, but I expect that 16th Army is going to have to be activated before we get the whole ball rolling up here, and that should do it for Army Group North. Uh, one last thing, because Talon has the red dot, not the gray dot, it will supply forces there, so I'm actually going to try to push and attack this bubble. Okay, that went well enough. Um, and the goal here is just to do a follow-up attack with the best of the two. 85, we'll go with you and you. And we're trying to do this attack and push them hopefully east before, and then we'll cut them off from any supply. Okay, that went well. Good. So, yeah, 204,000, that's definitely good. I mean, these are conscripts, but nonetheless. So we'll put my 70 in there. This guy can actually do even yet another follow-up attack, which sounds crazy. This is full of units with extremely low readiness. I am very tempted. It would diminish their combat capability next turn. You're at 70. It's 70 versus 52, but they have no readiness. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Oh yeah, that went, I think that went very well. Wow. <laughs> they just had no readiness. <coughs> Excuse me. So Shattered won, the one that was almost dead anyway. Don't need to move in there, actually really more important for us to isolate on both sides. So yeah, now this unit is very weak. Um, and we can, tr they'll, they'll probably spread back out, but that's even better. And we're in good shape to take out this pocket next turn and then start working on Talon. Army Group South is probably going to be our busiest uh, little theater this turn. We are going to do a lot of things, yeah. So I'm going to shift this second mountain over into uh, Forbidden Territory with the nice red outline. But now we're going to attack with everyone. And it's just funny to me that the entire Army Group of Third Romania is trying to attack this one hex with two fairly good-shaped Soviet divisions. 
Uh, that's only 300. We don't even meet our attack stack maximum with the entire army group, but here we go. Alright, we took terrible losses, but I uh, was... Wow. I guess I wasn't uh, expecting things to go very well. Eh, it's just the Romanians, right? It's just the Romanians. Have a heart, Tortuga. I can't. It's just... Just can't have a heart. Uh, we are gonna move anybody who can move to the southwest, since I do want to shift some forces. The next target of opportunity for us is this one. Can anybody... Okay, one person can move south. That's sufficient for this guy to replace that one, and for this guy to jump all the way over here. This unit can then leapfrog forward. There's a method to buy madness. I've, you know, I think it's obvious, but I've planned this out ahead of time. That we could do just that. And it wasn't, attack went so poorly, I wasn't even sure we'd be able to get um, our units out. I mean, the 6th Army units out. But here we are. So this is an exciting turn in some senses because 6th Army is trying to exploit their early gains. Uh, we'll probably, let's see, how do we want to do this? I think we'll attack the 49th Tank Division with just probably you and you. Yeah, we'll do this. We probably don't even need to, but basically what I'm trying to do is have a nice foresight surround on the next armor division. And this one's just so weak, I thought we would just shatter it, but didn't quite happen. Anyway, you um, do have the capability of doing another attack. That's great, because we need you to. And this unit is going to attack again, which... Wait a second. Oh, this is perfect. They didn't do an attack yet, so this is absolutely perfect. So now we can do it with all four of these guys. And hopefully that's enough to minimize losses. Very good. Since this is a tank division, we don't actually kill that many people. But we are destroying a lot of equipment, including KB-1s. And their readiness is... Okay, it's down to 24. You know, it could be better. But it could be worse. We may exercise the option to have this unit here attack. Because I think we may want to... Can anybody... You can move up and attack. Otherwise that would be three sides. But it'll be all across the river. So I want to push this guy back too, for reasons that will become clear later. Basically the fact is that I want to shift 17th Army all the way east. I want them to even replace 1st Panzer Group, and 1st Panzer Group, Panzer Group doubles back for the big surround. I mean, there's a there's a plan underneath all this, but, well, you know, we'll, one step at a time. We just gotta try to deliver on the one-turn promise. One turn at a time, as they say in all these sports. One game at a time. So that should leave us with enough capability to attack this one with four. And I think that's actually what we want to do exactly. I do want to do a, a nice attack on these guys to push them back. So let's just do that. All right, we I think we made it up for the, a couple attacks going poorly for us. This one went very well with no losses, despite the fact that they did have high readiness and they were just sitting there waiting for us. So, got lucky, and we're, we're not done, because we definitely want to pursue, and you might think, well, that's a little bit crazy, you're, you're driving a little too far forward. Well, that's what this whole shenanigan was all about. Now we can shift this guy over here, and we can do our follow-up attack with two people. One person will stay in the hex we just occupied, push them back, shattered one, took one loss, but yeah, and we didn't really dish out that much punishment. But I'm going to say that that's still okay, since... Uh, the benefit we have is that next turn, that unit will be very weak. So what we've done here is we're just creating more, like, the, the more surface area we create, the less, I mean, the more nooks and crannies and corners and backtracking and all that is, it's very good, because then we have more angles we can attack from, more flanks. And that's what we're seeking to do right now, just get a lot of different flanks and different sides on the different units we can attack. And we're pushing through. We'll see what happens. The reason I want to attack this unit is, it's kind of comical, I mean, I don't really, I just don't want it there. <laughs> I don't want you there. I think we'll go ahead and do the attack from here as well. And I'm going to do it with all people, including one from this, which is probably still better. You know, the concentric bonus doesn't go up, but I think the attack, that's the only one attacking from not across the river. But I want this to happen so that these two can move forward, and they're going to be my new 17th army on that side. Let's just do the attack. I hope we, I, I hope we win. Crying out loud. We did. And they took... Okay, it was 5 to 1 or so, so not, 
Not great, but good enough. And these two will jump across. You will stay, because I need you to. And you'll probably do another talk attack across the river, sorry. But next turn. Um, but now that means that our HQ, which is where, can move one, two, two forward. I think we could do one more if we move them up and to the right. Yeah, so if this moves up to the right, that's fine. So we can move up to the right. I'm going to do it. Because my goal is, well, actually, I'll see. I might not need to do that. I might just stay here. I'll probably move up if I don't move up to the right. Just to get more um, bonuses to my troops. But the, the plan is to push as far as we can. Now, before that happens, right now movement is pretty limited. Um, that's mostly exacerbated by the fact that there's a lot of zone of control against us. So we can uh, we can try to eliminate that. I uh, made one little little tiny mistake here. I shouldn't have moved the ninth motorized all the way forward because actually I want somebody on this hex so that we can attack. Now this is a little bit tough that we're going to be attacking this unit from like so much of the attack is going to have to come from across a river. I don't like that. Um, actually, maybe before I do anything else... No, yeah, this is what I want to do first, actually. So... Move you forward. And I'm going to move you over here. You're not going to be able to do anything else this turn, but I think that this is what you were meant to do. Kind of a messy situation, though. I don't really like my armor attacking. Maybe I won't have them attack. Can one of these guys shift? Yeah, they can. What about have shifting? That's probably the best thing to do. Let's do it this way. That way I, I preserve my armor. All right, should be a, a nice victory for us. We took the Italian motorized loss, but nothing else. Good, da good damage on the other side. 4,400 conscripts down. But really, that's just paving the, the beachhead. Obviously, we're already across the river, so not really a beachhead, but... Move these two units across. Mainly what I wanted to do is, um, I want to get these units into position to start, not this turn, but very soon, working on that huge pocket where we can gobble up all these conscripts and let them starve. And, I mean, we are very close to, to Kharkov. We're also very, very close to Rostov. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's only ten hexes from Pavlograd here to Rostov. And we're practically there. In fact, that's one of the things I am planning to do this, this turn. In fact, right now even, is to, to take it. So we're going to move one, two, and three. Good three sides of surround. 161 to 34. This should be a cakewalk. Knock on wood. Did take one SS heavy infantry loss, but they did lose their, their forces. We'll also do a follow-up to that because I think it's, uh, you know, intelligent to do so. Both these guys will attack, but neither of them are actually going to uh, follow up into that hex because we're at the limit of our advance. So right now, what I have to take care of is that Kiev is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now, it's only 11 if I go here as well. Or here. I mean, this is the... We can get 11, but the further off the road we go, the worse it is for the trucks. So I think by compromise, I'm going to move up and to the right. Just one turn. We're going back on the road next turn. Hopefully that's when all these guys will be back, so... That's why I'm moving back down. And who knows, I may even pull back to the west here. Because I do want to do that. I just need one unit, probably this motorized, to guard um, Pavlograd until the 17th Army gets there and takes over the occupation. Also, they're going to round the bend and head south. But not my army group, my panzer group. Sorry, the army group, yes, but the panzer group has to stay closer to the lines of supply for the trucks. Which means this, <laughs> no matter what happens with this around, the pocket we're forming, this panzer group's probably going to end up parking itself on a hill and just trying to keep everybody within five, <laughs> but, you know, from here. One, two, three, four, five, you know? And then we'll just have to make sure that everyone stays within that cone 
um, while we also at the same time try to form a pocket. It's gonna be a fun little dance, but that's my plan. Um, we'll see if we can make that tight for a walk. Okay, I'm gonna pause real fast, take a drink. Well, truth be told, this, uh, man, this guy's really hindering things. He slows down all my action points across this, but that's kind of cool thing that this unit is being, is bravely defending the Soviet forces. Uh, nonetheless, we're gonna have some attacks we're gonna continue with. First of all, I have decided we are gonna push these guys back here. Um, we're, we gotta gear up for the big encirclement, right? This one is gonna come over here and help with this attack on two sides. This is a 10% bonus. Otherwise, should be a wipe, just a, I think it's a good, big victory. We lost one Panzer II. They didn't lose any KV-1s, which is a little disappointing, but they did lose a handful of T-34s. Readiness is reduced a fair amount. Okay, all right, well, um, only one of these units can do the follow-up attack, which I'm less, kind of a little bit less, excited about doing now that I've seen those results. And you're wondering why I'm leaving this completely empty. I do have some forces here who can come up and make uh, make up the difference. Yeah, I think this one may be... That is really good distance. And you also really good distance. Okay, so this the fact that this one can come up and support here is very good. I think we'll do that. We might even just keep one of these infantry in the city. I might just have one rotate across to hold the swamp. We need to make sure that we don't lose this crossing. It's so pivotal. Although we do have forces from the 17th Army who can control both the city and the the bridge crossing into the swamp. Um, yeah, then the, the question is whether or not to do the fall up here. I mean, they're down to 26 readiness. I think that this is probably what we're supposed to do is follow up. And that went exceptionally well. So good job to this motorized. Somebody mentioned this in the comments. I forget who, and I apologize that I forgot, but... And you know what? It's something that I, I didn't, like, think about enough, is how strong the motorized are. Yeah, the armored divisions are very strong too, especially against enemy tank divisions, but you're mostly fighting infantry, and the motorized do an excellent job against them. So, I mean, the, I, I believe that the comment the person left was something about the motorized being the strongest unit. And I, I, I don't disagree with it, that's for sure. I'm not sure how much I agree with it, but probably I tentatively agree with it currently, and I think that we've just seen how powerful they can be. Okay, have we left any weak spots? Well, this is the only hex that has any attacking capability, and honestly, God, 74 and this one, yeah, they have two divisions who can attack, we have good defenses everywhere. So that, yeah, they're not gonna be able to break out of that. It's not technically a full pocket yet, so maybe, I don't know how strongly they'll react to not a full pocket. Well, another thing I could do is move a unit all the way around down here. This is probably gonna depend on exactly what I do with the 17th Army. And although I've planned it out a little bit, it's so convoluted that I, I don't know which unit is supposed to go where, and I'll probably have to do another little pause break, but I mean, we kind of get the gist of what's going on up here. Let me just spin off to something a little more exciting, which is not that exciting, but this uh, this moving around Krivorog. So they had this really aggressive unit come over, and I think what we, I mean, obviously want to do is um, is eliminate this, cut this guy off, and eliminate them. So although what we could do is an attack where we attack from three sides, even this unit could probably contribute. But we, I mean, we have fuel right now, but we don't want to go too crazy. We saw that we were starting to have fuel problems last turn. So uh, it's probably wise of us to try to save and make sure we have a nice reserve. I don't want to attack with just two. I want to attack with more. And neither of these guys can help attack, but they could attack if this unit was punched back into this hex. There's also the problem, however, and this is funny, that if we move up more forces... I think we'll end up capturing that hex. <laughs> so I, 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 want, I want to move over this Panzer group, but I'm actually worried that if we do, we'll end up conquering that hex just by, you know, outweighing their zone of control. So maybe what I should do... I think I'll have this 67 come over. All right, we did not... You know, we did not... They can still retreat back. So I want to move them here as well, so that they're 
prepped. They don't have the extra zone of control penalty. But we, no, we're not going to do that. So let's just give him a place he can retreat back to attack with three armored, which is not ideal. I don't like to do this. Hopefully we don't take that big of losses. This guy has low readiness and low entrenchment, so hopefully not. But, I mean, wow. That, that was terrible. That was... We lost two Panzer threes and a Panzer IV. <laughs> oh my gosh. Probably could not have gone worse. <laughs> that was bad. Alright, well, we're actually even going to pull this guy back. That, oh, I think this 9 Panzer is the one who suffered all the losses there. Anyway, hopefully the infantry can come in in a big way and help out. Because this guy's actually done. He can't contribute in the attack anymore. Um, you know, this is probably fine. This guy's already weakened. So we'll attack with all four again. I'm a little nervous about the... Come on, tanks, don't die. Oh, Panzer II. I guess that Panzer II is okay. The poor tank crews of Panzer IIs are probably like, Why does... Tortuga hate us. What do we ever do to him? Oh, well, you didn't protect the Panzer threes and the Panzer fours. That's what you did wrong. Anyway, uh, we'll leave these guys where they are. No real point in moving them back west, so they'll just stay there. I don't think the Soviets are going to try to cross the river on this side, but I don't really care if they do. It'd be easy to push them back. It's harmless if they cross anyway. In fact, it's kind of like one less unit on the side of the river, which matters now. Otherwise, we're going to try to fill up the gaps here. I'm trying to see if anybody can get over to the first armored. And the answer is unfortunately... Oh, I was saying unfortunately no, but the answer is yes. One person can. Fantastic. Really didn't want to leave them all by themselves. Okay, so then everyone else fills in the gaps nicely. We got two units here, two units here. And the first armored has some support. Good. So that's pretty much everything from here. Uh, 11th Army is now going to get their supply from the double rail. So we'll just move them up nice and close to everyone else. And that's... 11th Army's done. 4th Romanian's going to be two more turns before we can move them, but... Um, with the river crossing in the northeast, I don't really need the 11th Army to push across. We can probably just wait on the, the 17th Army coming down from the east. We'll see. And now, I guess it's time I have to figure out this thing. Give me a second. Oh gosh, help me. I... <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be all right. I'm gonna try to do this right, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it right or not. So you move here. Um, let's just push this guy as far as he can go. Push this guy as far as he can go. It's a good start. This guy can go across, but can we get one of these guys get across? Yes, that one goes there. That one can't. This one might go to here instead. Then let's wait on him. Yeah, we'll wait on both of those. This guy can go across, and he should then. Check. Okay, we can't go any further than that, so that's where we go. Actually, we can. We can go up and to the right. That's right. <laughs> it's just it's a complicated maneuver. So up and to the right means we can get to wherever we want. So that means 105 versus 105. It's the same either way. I think I'd rather protect this area. So we'll move there. Um, okay, so let's see. That one, I want all these to stay because they're going to be doing attacks next turn. Keep pushing further east. Uh, you are fine, that means, but you are mobile. I want you to move. I think we want to just, so this one has 100 readiness. These guys don't. So I might even just move this one here. This guy. I mean, you can tell I'm just trying to wing this. It's a 67. Not a great amount of readiness on this one. This guy can move here, and then we'll do that instead. I don't know why I did that, but they're not going to be... I don't think they'll be attacked. Well, let's hope not. And now, at this point, you have to move here. And I think you should support the headquarters, just to make sure we aren't attacked there. Alright, good. So, the <laughs> we worked that out. I mean, we just kind of winged it. I mean, I probably was trying to get an exact order of things, but who knows if I did anything like what I was planning to do. Uh, I mentioned that we don't want to be, we want to be conservative with our fuel. What I can do is move this unit. Yeah, so I can move him here without suffering any zone of control penalty, which is fine. Gets him on the road, gets him closer to, well, being at the front, which is nice. Um, I think that this unit also just, okay, can't, does, doesn't have any moves left to do. I don't want to lose that one hex. I don't know why it, it would bother me to do so. 
So we'll get maybe this guy, 15, 25. 15, 25. And it would only be 35 to move in there if we didn't have zone of control blocking, so... Although he might be good going across and doing an attack against the infantry if we want to do a full surround next turn. Although that's going to be left for 17th Army, so you know what? No, I'm just going to have him go up here and also wait. Okay, fair enough. This motorized is going to sit here as well. Oh, you... You, you my friend, look at that, you can go all the way up here. And I want you to, I definitely want you to. I want you to, maybe, what's our limit? So that's our, okay, we don't know our limit. One, two, three, oh, we do, because this is two away. If it's bordered by only red, then it's the limit. So that's the limit. I like that though. Nice, excellent, good. I think this is great, actually. We're definitely well on our way to, to getting the pocket closed. This is a good turn. Could be even more aggressive, but I don't know. Why am I holding back? Fuel-wise, I think we're okay. We're gonna be better off surrounding if we push these units across now, so you know what? Yeah, I am gonna do it. Yeah, let's get both of them across then. Okay, there, I feel even better now. We're in good position to do our offensive next turn. Um, assuming nothing goes poorly. First Panzer Group can just move I need him back on the rail. Oh no. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to have to probably move him back and here. Yeah, that's what we can do. Just move him back one. So that's not going to be too bad. It's going to be one hex cheaper. One rail hex cheaper next turn. Anyways, that's it for Army Group South. We already spent enough time on it. And it was a very good turn. We're 10 hexes from Rostov. Just four hexes from Kharkov. And really, we know if Kharkov will fall if this whole thing gets pocketed and destroyed. And then we don't need Sevastopol, but you know I'm, I'm a, I would like to take out take it all. I'm a paint the map perfectionist, so we'll go for that too. But that's it for Army Group South. And last, as always, Army Group Center, definitely not the least. We're gonna start in the north part of it this time. It's gonna be a guys. I think it's gonna be interesting because my planning tells me to do some pretty aggressive movements. Uh, I'm just gonna start off with them. We're doing a surround. I think this is what I'm ending up doing. So this guy will go here, this guy can go here. That leaves that one open. We don't want them to escape. Close the trap! Now, I want to do this surround elimination of these forces. Not that they, it needs to be done this turn. But I want to do it this turn because... Uh, yeah, I want to move all these forces forward, naturally. So neither of those guys can get in. Can anybody get in here? Yes, so I need you. You're actually being <laughs> drawn off that way too. And you can't do the attack from there, but you can, so you will. And then both of you guys are just gonna move in and we'll do the attack with everyone who's left, except for not, not the blue units. 150% bonus right at the attack stack limit, so it looks like those units, uh, this worked out perfect. Took some big losses, 1,200. I don't know, I guess that's not that big. It is an acceptable exchange, I guess. Um, it's basically 15 to one. Uh, and our forces are clear. So there we go. Can anybody move forward, maybe? That would be good. A little bit. A little bit. Neither of you guys, and you can move. I might just keep you right there, actually, just in case. Okay, uh, so that's that's good. Um, yeah, so we have this unit to finish off, which is just going to be the infantry coming in and forcing the surrender of the HQ. Good that we didn't. <laughs> good that we didn't lose anybody. It could have happened. All right, now I have some other things I planned out, and I think it could go well for us. I mean, it might not. That goes without saying. But, so we have this motorized, and I need to... I need to get around these guys. Did I mess up here? What's the... There's something wrong with this. I want to do the attack with this motorized. Where is... There's got to be another motorized or something. my map. This guy's destined for over here. Where did 
I do wrong? Oh, no, no, this is fine. He is going to come here, and he's going to do this attack, just as I said. And that's going to pocket the, the rest of the units. It's perfect. I managed to actually take some significant losses there. More than I expected. Now we could do the fall, but now it's a full unit, so we're just going to rest there. That's good. These guys have done their job. Next, we have this interesting situation. That doesn't really matter which of these two we move into. I'll move into this one. We're going to do an attack with everybody except for not the armor. What's going to happen is this is going to clear the zone of control from this hex, which is going to allow that armor to move 10, save, preserve, 10 extra action points for a push to Rezev. Okay, this is kind of a weak force. Ugh, wow, that that went better in my mind than it did in reality. 1240. So it's 4 to 1, call it 5 to 1, because I'm I'd rather hear 5 to 1 than 4 to 1. It didn't go as well as I was hoping, actually. But now the main thing is it previously took 100 to get here, now it only takes 90. We'll do this, we'll do the attack from both of the armor units. Just eliminate this guy immediately. Good, just as planned, just as planned. Now this unit only has uh, 20 action points left. We know there's actually a garrison in Rezev, but I can get this unit all the way here. So long as I move him first before we know there's a garrison there. And then this unit is just going to move in. And things are going extremely well, I would say. Um, okay, so now the next step is... We don't actually probably want to move into this hex. I do want to shift everyone one, <laughs> because we have a gap in our line, which is pretty apparent. Oh, and by the way, this is extraordinary. Moscow! Moscow! I was uh, analyzing this situation a little bit off camera, and it's just, um, I think that... Here's another thing. A lot of the forces that are in the north around Smolensk and north of the river are, um, are... I mean, there's some exceptions at the north right here. This 63, this 58, but that might be it. For like strong forces this 54 is like 80 percent strength so not even 100 but it's like the best they have up here yeah everything's pretty weak in fact this is a, an opportunity for us to attack again let me do all and i forget there's one of these 280 277 so i'll take the 280 which means the stronger one is attacking one is three combat strength higher than the other hopefully this goes well Okay, a thousand versus a lot more than a thousand. Okay, that's, I would, I'll take this. I'll take this. So this is, you know, it's seven to one just with the Soviet infantry, plus tons of equipment lost, an additional 4,400 conscripts. Yeah, and this actually plays right into the point I was starting to make. Um, we've bled the north dry. They may have a lot of counters, a lot of, the shell of divisions, but these are all so under strength as to be very combat ineffective. And if you look, the place where they are putting on the pressure, again that word pressure, but is in the south where there's not really a strategic objective for them to hold. I mean, I've already taken Briansk. I guess they, you could say that they're holding the southern river for Smolensk. It's, it's a possibility that, I mean, so, okay, they are putting pressure on here. So Guderian's forces, I, I'm just going to call this the bait. It, it's like a ruse. We've made our big push. We've drawn the reinforcements to Kursk and now into the, the theater against Guderian, countering him. But all of that, if that's, I mean, let's pretend that that is the, the rationale. That is the justification for why those units appeared. is because of Guderian's aggressive push into the open space. If that triggered their um, deployment of reinforcements there, and, you know, that's a place that they didn't deploy them then, was up in the north. So yeah, we have this very weak force that we're up against, and it's like the grinding down has, has really worked here. Uh, now, note to self, I am very... Let me move two up to the right, or I can do one, so one, two... This is maybe not enough. Let's just start here. Yeah, we're, we need to go one more up or one more to the right. Well, let's go up so that we're not on the front. We're pretty far away. We're getting further away from the road. And that is the one... Uh, yeah, that's another factor at play here. I don't want to say the one because it's just a factor. But, 
but hold on one second. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are six hexes from Moscow. Six hexes. We're closer to Moscow than we are to any other objective. In the end, not even the end, August 25th. We have another turn in August before we are there. Okay, I, uh, <laughs> let me eat my words. Technically, we're only four <laughs> hexes from Leningrad, which we've been since the beginning of the war, pretty much. Yeah. But um, as far as like the normal non-Finnish forces go, we are one, two, three, four, five, six hexes, but, you know, seven hexes if you do it in a way which is a path by land. Six hexes as the crow flies, but I think in this case it's probably more appropriate to say seven hexes away from Leningrad. Um, seven hexes away, though. We're also very close to Leningrad, but we know that this is a much more difficult journey. This is no open roads towards Moscow. This is definitely... And then, uh, you know, a much more brutal fight through the swamp, through the cities. And Rostov, what did we say? Ten? I think this is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're ten hexes away from, from Rostov. Moscow is the one we're closest to, and what we see in front of us is just a, it's just green. Now, the forest could be hiding units, probably not just two hexes away, they wouldn't hide there, but could be forces hiding here. I'm almost positive that there's a garrison in Kalinin. I don't know, it's very interesting though. We're like, it, we're it, so close. <laughs> anyway, gotta move on, gotta get the rest of this episode done. So what else do I want to do? I want to shift the second army closer so that they're actually providing a little bit more support to the units um, up here. I, it's, I'm it's i not sure if it's time to move in yet or not. It's a, kind of a tough question. We're, we're having a very good time grinding down the forces, just letting them... Con and we've done a great job. Look at Smolensk. Has one unit and one garrison, I think. Yeah, one strong garrison. But otherwise, 33, 20, 24. So 64 for their readiness of their garrison, too. I don't know why it's so low, but 6, 11... 8, 12, even their 48 is uh, only a combat strength of 12. I mean, readiness of 12. So you, you look at this number, and if we attack, it's, okay, it's below 200, so it wouldn't take extra attack stack um, penalties, but you feel like th they're ready to get, and look at this, just an 11 and a 12. I might even do a follow-up. I didn't even consider doing this, but now that I see how weak they are there, is it time to move in? We could do it, and we could do a follow-up if we do. Yeah. And this is a very, I think, obvious follow-up to do against two offensive units that are 59 and 29. They're just, they're very low readiness as well, especially the 29. No entrenchments to speak of, which makes sense. They don't really have any troops to entrench since uh, tanks don't really entrench, but infantry can, so they can get entrenchment bonus from that. I think it's, it's somehow it's like prorated for, you know, inventory is probably at 80, the tanks are at zero, and, you know, they roll that all into a number which comes out as 12. Anyway, I'm tempted to do a follow-up attack here, not that we really need to, but, I mean, we, so we need this road. Uh, and the third Panzer Group HQ points out this better than anything. One, two, three, four, five. We're five hexes off road, and that's probably the most we've been for a long time. Now we're only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hexes as the crow flies from Orsha, which means that we won't the trucks won't face an extra distance penalty. But uh, that's still a lot of off road travel that we would rather the ro the trucks not accumulate that extra mileage um, or take those kind of losses. But this is a good turn. I, th I think we're done here so that I can actually do some decisions and all that and get to pretty pictures, but I'm very happy with this. I'm not sure about the additional attack. Uh, let me pause and think. Okay, I am going to do that attack, but I also noticed that, I mean, not, there's kind of an obvious problem here. I need to move this unit here. So this unit can move here so that we can make the front solid. And I think I'm going to want to reinforce 7 and 54. It is a little bit stronger. There's a motorized here. But the motorized only has regular regular Soviet imagery, so I guess it's going to... Yeah, so we'll leave things to where they are. I know I want to do this attack, though. Get you in here. And there's the 100. And I'm, I, I think that the attack with just these is fine. 
Can you do the attack? You could, and it puts us... Huh, okay, well, when I see that, it must be a sign. More losses than I expected, but okay, we are eliminating tanks, which is good. Their last T-34. Some AT. Very light on the infantry. Oh well, you know, I my um my thought process there is really more we gotta get going, we gotta start moving, we gotta get to the road, and I don't think I'm gonna move in there. We'd be too surrounded. Seems a little vulnerable. But let's inflict losses where we see opportunities to do so. Now it's a bit threatened. We have good entrenchment on this side. Yeah, they have three super combat effective units here, which is scary. I want to move this move it, uh, this unit north so that I can move one of these units in here. So I'm, I'm still going to do that at least, but I don't think I can move one of these guys north. I probably should move it south of all things. <laughs> I, you know what? I am 60. Ah, this one also has two 63s and a 55, so. Uh, this is tough. I leave it here for now because Orsha is the most important thing, so we'll just defend it with two infantry. So that'll call this turn to a close. Um, but yeah, good progress. Huge progress in the north. I mean, we're really just, just really cruising along in the open area. And Kalanin's in sight, and Rajev's right there. I'm feeling good, yeah, I think you can tell how excited I am. Moscow is so close. Alright, bottom to top for decisions. We're going to eyes upon troop for Army Group South. Continue operating with Unsecure Zone. Basically the point of this is that we want to make sure um, that we don't slow down. Yeah, and the, the top option is, there's a ch so basically we, we, we chose the one that has a chance of not slowing down. Um, truck refit, let's save this. This is unfortunately very expensive. We probably can remind us in a week because our, our point situation is really bad. Um, political point situation. Same with field visit. We actually have field visit with a 30% chance of getting wounded plus subordinate HQ, so we probably sh almost surely will not do the field visit. Our relationship with everyone is pretty high anyway, so I'm just gonna say this for that. Um, smooth away is a nice one. This is gonna help um, the army groups have some advantage, um, some freedom of movement. I really want army group south to get going. So this will mean that um, army group south should have a chance. And speaking of army group south, Ukraine's governor wants to be appointed, but this is going to raise partisan activity and just in general be very bad for us. I'm not going to do a full protest, but I'm going to attempt bureaucratic obfusc obfuscation. Uh, this will delay it by 20 days, so we have five extra turns before things go to hell in a handbasket. I think in five turns well, we should actually have advanced pretty far in the south, and hopefully at that point um, everything will just, it'll already be over. Tire shortage. Yeah, the, the problem is, I mean, you know that this is a minus 1% to everything, but any of the other options is a minus 1% to two of them, and everyone gets pissed. So I typically try to roll well. <laughs> How do you do that? I think we actually do need the tires in Army Group South though, so I'm going to do that. And this is the problem I see is that it's a minus one to, you know, the other two and a plus one, so it's overall a negative thing. And Von Lieb wasn't very happy. Which one's Von Lieb? Army Group North. We well, still 38, and honestly we don't have that, that good of a chance of using the extra action points up there anyway. Capture trucks. Um, Wagner's actually getting very low in terms of relationship, so I want to improve his relation with us. So I'm going to demand all trucks are handed over. Now Von Bach is going to be upset. <laughs> this is just the way it goes, I guess. You're always pissing off somebody. So we had superb relationship with these people and we're starting to lose it. I don't know. We can make a case for visiting either of these. We do have 24 points, so we got to be very careful. I think that um, Center's relationship is more important, so we'll put him back to Superb. I like to have a 50% chance of getting um, the different uh, extra bonus points for Army Group Center. I mean, that, that would be very helpful on Ninth Army, for example. Oh, and speaking of which, I don't know why I didn't move up the HQ. That's definitely where it needs to be. Okay, and then that's uh, cards. I can do the cards real fast, too. So in Army Group North, 
Nobody, I, I guess the Corellian one could go to sleep. Are they, the other one? Yeah, they'll be activated next turn, so we'll actually rest the Corellians. From group north. And I think I'll keep them on Blitzkrieg posture, though. Nobody else in the army. Oh, I also want to switch artillery to over the 18th army. Because the 16th is not active, so it doesn't make sense for them. It was a blunder, in fact, that I didn't do that last turn. I also am going to switch over from the 9th army, which has been very used, has been, has used it well. But you know what? We just don't have the political points for it. I was going to switch over to the 2nd army, but that's not a big deal. 9th army can still be useful. I just feel like 2nd army is going to have to be punching through Smolensk, eventually at least, and they probably need it more at that point. Yeah, you know what? I just talked myself into it. It has to be done. Second army. Must be pretty exciting for them that they're now going to be getting involved. In the south, I want to do third Romanian, but I'm going to wait another turn on that. And nobody's going to be resting in center, so we're all good to end the turn. So I wisened up and I'm using a, a just a different screen capture method. And I think this will be a lot more satisfying. We'll be able to look a little bit more into things. I can zoom in if we really want. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, go through the stuff which we already know. This is round three, round four, round four us, round five. That's the Soviets' turn they just took. Now it's our turn. Soviets, ours, Soviets, ours, Soviets, and mud, and ours, Soviets, ours. Soviets, German, hmm, we got in the south. This is not a 10A, 10B. So beginning of round 10 after the Soviet turn and, and that was a big push. And that's, I guess, because, and hey, you can see my cursor, yay. <laughs> because of the pocket in the south. Not too much movement otherwise, okay. I'm trying to get back to, I think this is more or less where we were and I don't have too much time, so we're gonna have to do this pretty quickly. But here we are in round 12. Ooh, look at that little push in the top, I like that. And a lot of ground taken in the north as well. This is where we're pulling back on the Finnish theater as well. Soviets did some pretty drastic movements it looks like. And big push in army group north, but and you know, certainly a push in army group center over here. Moving on. Then here we go again. Big thrust over here. That's where we were pushing right to Bryansk. Good development in the south. Soviet turn. Soviet turn. Yeah, they actually captured a little territory back. And our push, I, I wish I had controlled this better um, when I end my turn, not to be highlighting somebody. because can... Anyway, that was a huge, this was the huge push to Kursk. Like one of the biggest <laughs> territorial gains and big progress in the south as well. Okay, moving on though. Um, this is now around 16. I would say moderate gains this turn. Nothing too much to write home about. Okay, 17. Oh, a lot more progress on this one, at least in this area, Northern Army Group Center. A little bit. Oh, this is where we cross the river. And then 18. And then that's us. So that's it. Uh, I wanted to update you on that. I thought that was interesting to see. So the last few turns, kind of rewinding them, have been... Well, I mean, we're making steady progress. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, we'll end the turn and start the next one in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.